And now, your host, Matthew Berry. Thank you, Jeff the Fish. We are the Not Ready for E1 players. The next half hour, we're going to make you a smarter fantasy football player and a much dumber person. That's our promise to you. Coming up today on the show, huge news about Ezekiel Elliott. We'll break that down. Week 6 is here. So we're going to break down all the games for you, plus a reaction to Thursday Night Football. But first, you could squirrel. What kind of show will it be? Great question, Matthew. Looks like, um, oh, cringy. Cringy. Won't be our first time. So the Ezekiel Elliott suspension news came down yesterday, right after we taped our show and, frankly, right before it went on the air. So apologies. But yesterday's show did not address that huge fantasy news. But please, I do not want you to think our show can't do breaking news, because we can. This just in. Pretty much everything in the world is terrible right now. Like, like really everything. But the fantasy show has puppets, so that's kind of fun, right? <gasps> See? All right, look, obviously in the 24 hours since the news broke that a federal appeals court cleared the way for the league to suspend Elliott for six games, there has been a run on the wide-open waiver wire to pick up Darren McFadden and Alfred Morris. By the way, both of them still available in more than 50% of ESPN leagues as of this taping. So it's obviously bad news for Elliott owners, although you would have to assume that most Ezekiel Elliott owners have nothing to complain about, right? Like, he's running back six so far this season, meaning teams that he's on are likely high in their league standings and in great shape to make the fantasy playoffs with or without Elliott. Daniel, you'd agree with that, right? Yeah, let's just keep going on. Let's just move on. You don't agree, Daniel? No, it's not. It's just not a topic that interests me, Matthew. Oh, that's right. I... I forgot, you have Ezekiel Elliott in our show league, yeah. and yet you're somehow still 0-5. Like, that's, that's brutal. I so that appreciate, must be so awful. I so appreciate you bringing up my winless record on, on public television right now. That's just so great. Really? Because you seem sarcastic about it. You don't really seem like you are. Um, were, you, were you able to pick up McFadden, at least? I was not. McFadden was drafted by Gronk. Yeah, uh, cartoon, <laughs> cartoon Gronk. Yeah, and then, uh, oh, yeah, there he is, Fred. Fred picked up uh, Alfred Morris off of waivers yesterday. So it's not my fault. Here, I'm fourth in the league in points right now, Matthew. How am I own five when I'm fourth in the league in points? It's bad luck. Is it that? Or do you just not know how to play? I guess we'll find out. It's true. We literally do have a league where the robot and the cartoon have more wins than Daniel. Look, here's another truth. We don't know how this will play out. And Todd Archer, who covers the team for ESPN, reports it's going to be a committee between Darren McFadden, Alfred Morris, and Rod Smith. A committee isn't ideal, and frankly, Cowboys' offensive line hasn't been as dominant as they have in the past. Obviously, there's value to be had here. Of those guys, with ESPN default leagues being PPR, I prefer Darren McFadden because of his pass-catching ability. Two seasons ago, with this team, Darren McFadden, RB13, he caught 40 passes. Morris has never caught more than 17 passes in a season. If you're still able to pick up either one of these guys, I guess go with McFadden. But ideally, you could grab Morris, too, and in really deep leagues... Rod Smith, absolutely worth a flyer. He's a talented kid. Truthfully, there's a lot we still don't know yet about this situation. There's only two things we definitely know for sure. Number one, we'll be talking about this many more times. And Secret Squirrel's 0-5, that's for sure. Hey, Daniel, guess what we're doing? Well, you're wearing a cool T-shirt and have sleeves. I am dressed like a tool. Good guess. Very close. But you're wrong. We're trading places. Get it? Well, why, though? Why would we do that? Because we're going to talk about Ezekiel Elliott trade options. That seems just like a really awful and long-winded way to get to this segment. You're wrong, old man. <laughs> now, look, people in your league who are Ezekiel Elliott owners may be feeling pretty desperate today with a six-game suspension looming. Could be willing to move him for viable replacements. <laughs> a lot of hair here. But as Elliott's suspension begins next week, it would run from week 7 through week 12, right? Putting them back in action just in time for the fantasy playoffs. So if you're a fantasy owner that's 5-0, and 4-1, and you're looking good for the playoffs. Consider making an offer for Elliott from a position of strength, knowing that you could land one of the top backs in football for when it really matters, the fantasy playoffs, giving you a fantasy dream team from week 13 on. And if you picked up Darren McFadden or Alfred Morris and you don't have Elliott, consider trading them for the right price. Again, it's going to be a committee in Dallas. That line has struggled. Their value may be at its highest right now, as other, as other owners imagine, like, what it could be. If I had them and I did not have Zeke, I would certainly see what I could get. Remember, your trash can be another owner's treasure. 
And the best trades are those that help out both sides. I think I got the worst end of this trade right here. I think you look amazing. I'm in a good mood today. It's Friday, the weather is beautiful, and yet there are people after me on Twitter trying to harsh my buzz. Boo, you stink at your job, man. You've been having secret squirrels, the only good thing about the show. <laughs> not everything they're saying on Twitter is not a totally accurate representation. But the fact of the matter is, is there are definitely people being mean to me today because yesterday I said on this very television program that I was big on Devin Funches for Thursday night and frankly not so high on Carson Wentz in the Eagles passing game. But did I really say that? Like if you watched any of the baseball game last night, you know how important video replay is. And it's the same on this show. Cat, roll the tape. There are several players I like tonight, especially on Carolina's side of the ball. Cam Newton, Devin Funches, Kelvin Benjamin. I like all of them this week against Philadelphia. And you know what? While I love Carson Wentz as the future in Philadelphia, I don't immediately like his fantasy future, meaning his future tonight in Carolina. Okay, so you see that. But now if you slow it down, you should bench Devin Funches and start Carson Wentz. See? Totally nailed it. Thank you, Video Replay and my production assistants. All right. The assistance of technology aside, look, I am still bullish on Funches going forward. Yes, only three for 36. But he was targeted eight times. Cam Newton simply wasn't accurate throwing the ball last night. Funches has now been targeted 35 times in the last four weeks. That's 40% more targets than Kelvin Benjamin over that same time frame. I believe in him. Keep them in your lineup. Another receiver, it's clear you should now move from your free agent wire or your bench into your lineup. Nelson Aguilar. His week one performance of 86 yards in a score seemed like a fluke. It was kind of a broken play. And so did his week five game with 93 yards in a uh, touchdown. It was mostly one big play. But after another touchdown catch last night, they're really using Aguilar's after the catch speed, which is what he was known for out of the draft. He now has 15 or more fantasy points in three of his six games this season. That is legit, semi-consistent production. He clearly has chemistry with Carson Wentz. Aguilar. Again, available more than 60% of leagues is a flex option going forward for me. And finally, Carson Wentz. Look, you guys know I hyped him all preseason. I admit, I was wrong about him last night. But what he did on a short week in Carolina, less than halfway through his second NFL season, he is now a must-start week in, week out, set it and forget it, QB1 in fantasy. Now, Twitter, please stop yelling at me. Never, stupid idiot! Now, look, I don't want to get political. In fact, my boss, Norby, having a heart attack just over me mentioning the word. <gasps> Even the puppets are bad actors on this show. Look, but there's a huge debate in America right now that I feel I must weigh in on, weigh in on and it's this, okay? Is the Patriots defense so bad now that you have to consider loading up on Jets on some players against them? <laughs> I hadn't seen that before. All right, look, remember the Patriot, the Patriots, the Patriots, they're three and two. They have a Lombardi trophy, okay? They're also dead last in the NFL in yards allowed per game, 447, 50 more than the next closest team, the Colts. And they're the only fantasy defense with negative points in the season, like the entire season. So Jets players like Josh McCown, Jermaine Curse, Robbie Anstern, Austin Severian Jenkins still available in a ton of leagues, meaning they're available for fantasy owners looking for options in place of players who are injured or in bye weeks. But, you know, they're still the Jets and they're still facing the Patriots. So all that mumbo jumbo aside basically comes down to this. Secret Squirrel, I turn to you. In a week where you're nervous, yep. how comfortable are you starting Jets against the Patriots? It's a great matchup, but again, they're the Patriots, they're the Jets. Sure. I think the one person that I am most excited about would be Austin Safarian Jenkins. Yep. I think he's a guy that I'm a big fan of. I'm really looking to see Bilal Powell is going to be a game-time decision for this game. So that backfield, I'm really looking to see is it going to be Elijah McGuire, is it going to be Matt Forte. So I'm looking for a little bit more clarity on that situation, too. Yeah, I mean, I, ideally you have it. I will say Elijah McGuire, you know, the Jets running backs have produced uh, the 12th most fantasy points this season. And so if Forte and or Powell can't go, McGuire, I think, becomes an interesting flex play against a Patriots team that has allowed the most fantasy points to opposing running backs. I'm with you on Safarian Jenkins. 15 receptions the last three weeks. Yeah. That's fourth most in the NFL. After the break, it's our crystal ball segment. That's right. We stare into a puppet that vaguely looks like a crystal ball and predict week six fantasy performances.
We're not the best in the business for nothing, folks. Bridgestone Drug Show is presented by E-Trade, the original place to invest online. ESPN Fantasy Basketball is back, baby. Sign up today, ESPN.com slash fantasy basketball. And to draft, manage, and follow your team on the go, be sure to use the ESPN Fantasy app all season long. Time now to bust out the crystal ball to see who will have big games this weekend. On this show, that means we talk to a real-life crystal ball. Crystal, how are you this week? Oh, just terrible, Matthew. My oh, no. boyfriend, he was uh, driven into a lake, and no one can find him. Gosh, oh, that's, that's so my, terrible. Who was driving the car? Who said anything about a car? My boyfriend, he's a golf ball. You fall for it every week, dude. I really, dude. Do. I really week. do. I'm a sucker. Oh. I have short memory. All right, who's up for a secret squirrel? First up, Mark Ingram. Spooky visions and spirits. Scared of you? I ain't. I have 17.2 for Mark Ingram, a saint. <laughs> I didn't know where that rhyme was going, yeah, to be perfectly yeah. honest. I, I yeah. think you cheated there. Crystal, to be honest, give me the under on this. Has yet to score 12.1 fantasy points in a game this season. Yes, Adrian Peterson moving to Arizona helps. But I don't know that it helps that much. I actually think you see more Alvin Kamara in this game. Remember, he out-touched him just 18-15 to 15 last week. Detroit, uh, fourth-best run defense in the NFL in terms of yards per carry. Yep. And in the four games that they have played, he's only scored 12.1 points. It's the highest he's done. So to be able to get to 7.2, he's got to get in the end zone at least once, maybe twice. Yeah. I just don't see that happening. Yeah, on our projections, I'd be running back four. I have more as Yikes. running back 10 to 12, somewhere in that range. Next up, up. J.J. Frightful sights make you scream and say, Hey! I see 12.8 points for Miami Dolphins back J. Like, they're getting worse. So they're actually bad. getting worse. Like, I feel like some uh. of the rhymes you're not even trying here. Give me the under here, Secret Squirrel. Uh, 3.6 yards per carry in uh, in non 200 yard games since the beginning of last season. Remember, we had a couple of big games, but otherwise, it's been ineffective. Running back 40 so far this year hasn't scored a touchdown. The Dolphins, the only team in the NFL not to get into the end zone. I think game flow works against him, as I expect the Falcons to be able to score easily on the Dolphins. So I'm worried that the touches will go down in the second half. Sure. Like, give me the under here on a Jaya. And I understand where he, why he's there, because the touches, you're looking at a guy that's going to get consistent work. But again, if they're going to be down because the, the Falcons are putting up so many points, I just don't think it's going to happen. So I'm taking the under, too. Yeah, I think he's a low-end RB2 this week. Who's next? Next up, Mike Evans. You're going to love this one, Maddie. I promise. Okay, we'll see. Magical football words. Abracadabra. Hut, hut, hike. Let's go with 16.1 points for Evans, comma, Mike. <laughs> You know, that one wasn't bad. I like Evans, comma, Mike there. Unfortunately, I'm taking the under on 16.1. That would be wide receiver four this week, Secret Squirrel. Consider this. He's going to be matched up with Patrick Peterson, who's going to follow him all over the field. Peterson has let, yet to allow another wide receiver to go over 50 yards this year, and that's, wow. that's against guys like Des Bryant and T.Y. Hilton, some real wide receivers. As good as Mike Evans is, last year against, uh, uh, last year against Patrick Peterson, he caught six balls but needed 18 targets to do yeah. so. I think this is a big Deshaun Jackson game. I think you see some Doug Martin as well, Cameron Bray. Hard for me to see him getting to 16.1. Give me the under. I think I'm going to take the under, too. He's averaging 15.9 points per game, so you're saying he's going to beat his average with Patrick Peterson on him. I just don't see that happening. Yeah, I don't, I don't either as well. Who's last? Last up, Doug Martin. Oh, his teammate. Riches and spirits give your cauldron a stir. 11.3 for Doug Martin. A.K.A. the Muscle Hamster. No, this is so <laughs> dumb. Uh, uh, I like that one, actually, Crystal. I'm on board with you. I got your back here. Look, I, I'm going to take the over here. The 11.3 would be running back 28. And look, it's a tough matchup against Arizona, especially on your on the road. But I think he does better than that. A low, better than a low end. And flex. Consider this. Every week this season, the Cardinals have allowed more running back rushing yards than the week before. We saw Philadelphia just run all over them last week in Philadelphia, and we expect volume to be there for Doug Martin. 13 of the 17 carries for the Buccaneers last week just looked good. And, in fact, from weeks 10 through 15 last season, when Martin was healthy, he got 74% of the Buccaneers running back rushing attempts. It's going to be all him. Yeah, it's weird. It's like you're looking. It says, looked good, increased touches on my card. I swear you're just taking all the things I'm going to say. That's what I do. I steal stuff. Nice job. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Crystal. Appreciate that. After the break, we play Friend Mary Chill, the Week 6 edition. Am I going to marry all my Redskins against the Niners? You're invited to the ceremony. It's coming up next. Can't beat addiction on your own.
Time now for F. Mary Cho, where the F, of course, stands for friend. First game, Packers-Vikings. For the Packers, I'm going to friend Ty Montgomery. I'm nervous about the ribs, of course, but if he's active, I think you have to start him. Before his injury, the game before, he was top five. I'm going to marry Devontae Adams. Four touchdowns in four games. The volume will be there, especially with Xavier Rhodes on Jordy Nelson. And I'm going to chill on Martellus Bennett, who hasn't had double-digit fantasy points all year. I need to see it before I can trust him as a top ten play. For the Vikings, I'm marrying Adam Thielen, who is one of two receivers with at least five catches every game this year, along with A.J. Green. Plus, Stephon Diggs out on Sunday. I'm going to friend Jarek McKinnon. He's been running back 17 over his last 14 games, you know, since Pat Shermer became their offensive coordinator. Which means I'm chilling on Latavius Murray, who is averaging under three yards per carry, doesn't have the pass-catching upside of Jarek McKinnon. Secret Squirrel, two tricky running back situations in this game. Who are you comfortable starting in this game? I think I like Jarek McKinnon for the Vikings, given how much wor uh, workload he got last week. And I think I'd still go with Tom Montgomery if he suits up for me. Yeah, I do. I do think Aaron Jones has some flex appeal. However, sure. I don't think, I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Next up, let's play F, Mary Chill, Niners, Redskins. And, of course, the F stands for friend. For the 49ers, I'm going to friend Pierre Garçon. Seen the 10th most targets in the NFL so far, I expect the Niners to be down and throwing. I'm chilling, however, on Carlos Hyde. He's now in a committee with Matt Breida, not an RB1. Breida saw more snaps and touches last week than Hyde. Tough defense for the Redskins. And I'm going to marry nobody. I'm sorry, but there's nobody on the 49ers that's wife material. Stay single, kids. As for the Redskins, I'm friending Terrell Pryor. Last three weeks, 49ers have allowed 315 yards to opponents' top receivers with three touchdowns. And speaking of the guy throwing to him, Kirk Cousins, I'm marrying him. The 49ers have allowed nearly 300 passing yards per game the last three weeks to what I consider lesser quarterbacks off the bye. I like Cousins. However, I'm going to chill on Jamison Crowder. I know Jay Gruden said they need to get him more involved, but I need to see it. Just 18 targets all season long. He has 106 receiving yards on the year. So I'm looking at a big offensive week for my Redskins, especially Kirk Cousins and the receiver, Secret Squirrel. Your thoughts? I am all aboard the prior hype train, going three for 70 uh, two weeks ago before the bye with the touchdown, so I think he uh, keep that up. Yeah, and it'd be interesting to see. I think Samaj P. Ryan and Chris Thompson both were playing in this game. Uh, 49ers have the most rushes against them. Let's face it, teams get up and they run. Last one. Let's play F. Mary Chill, Steelers Chiefs. And, of course, the F stands for friend. For the Chiefs, I'm friending Alex Smith. Yes, he's been the top quarterback in fantasy. you got to start him. But believe it or not, the Steelers actually a top five fantasy defense against quarterbacks. I'm going to marry my ride or die, Kareem Hunt. Leonard Fournette ran all over the Steelers last week. I expect Hunt to do the same. Meanwhile, I'm chilling on Tyreek Hill. He's banged up. Pittsburgh actually number one defense against opposing wide receivers. He's just a low-end wide receiver, too, for me. For the Steelers, I'm going to friend Juju Smith-Schuster, who's actually out-snapped Martavis Bryant two weeks in a row. Slot receivers do well against the Chiefs. I'm going to chill on Ben Roethlisberger, who's been outside the top 20 quarterbacks three weeks in a row this game on the road in Arrowhead. Finally, I already married Antonio Brown. That's right. He's a must-start every single week, no matter who's throwing the ball or who he's playing against. Tika Squirrel, I ask you now, who do you think has a bigger game here? Le'Veon Bell? Or Kareem Hunt? Matthew, come on. I never creep on your boo. I'll take Le'Veon Bell. I'll let you have Kareem Hunt. How does that sound? I appreciate that. I think both guys have a huge game. Time now for a quarterback blind resume, right? These are two quarterbacks putting up similar fantasy numbers and have identical 13 to 3 touchdown to interception ratios. However, only one of them drafted as a starting quarterback on draft day. Who are they? Stick around for the answer and don't be this guy. Oh, is presented by E-Trade, the original place to invest online. Welcome back to the Fantasy Show. As for that blind resume, the answers are Aaron Rodgers on the left and Carson Wentz on the right. That's what we're talking about here. Both have 13 touchdowns and three picks. Both are set it and forget it starters the rest of the season. Time now for our daily reminder. Don't be this guy, right? Today's fantasy loser, Michael, who got his goggles, hopped in the bed of a truck and got a nice and clean and a do-it-yourself car wash. That looks painful, Secret Squirrel. Yeah, that, that water actually comes out pretty fast. And hot, yeah. I mean, like, uh, this oh, now now it's getting, like, now it's getting weird. No, they're so, they're really making sure. Think about the exfoliation. He should have tipped them. He should have tipped them. Those guys are working hard. Could have been so much more money.